Hey everyone, my name is Mason, and welcome back to FilterGrade. A couple years ago we made a video about easy After Effects transitions that you can make in just minutes. And you all loved it! So now we're back with another one. So as a quick recap, here's what we covered in the previous video. If you haven't seen it and want to get the basics of After Effects transitions down, you should watch that first, there'll be a link up in the top right corner, or in the description. In it, we showed how to create a simple fade, a wipe with a shape, a pump, a pan and crop, and a rotation transition. These transitions are basic ones that are super easy to create, so let's build on what we learned and look at a few more that you can make even if you're brand new to After Effects. For these transitions, we're just going to have two different clips in our project that don't overlap each other but do butt up to each other. We're going to be utilizing transparency and shapes this time, rather than applying effects directly to the footage. And to illustrate things easier, I'm going to put the point between the two clips on a time marker. Versatile Shape Wipe Template This first transition was inspired by a fantastic tutorial from Motion by Nick. So if this transition is something you like, please go over and like his video, as well as ours. Starting off, create a new solid. At this point, it doesn't matter what color it is, but if you have a color in mind, then you can pick it now. Search for and apply the Linear Wipe transition to the solid. Open the linear wipe settings until you see the transition completion property. Now move the playhead to one second before the transition point and create a keyframe. Set this keyframe's value to 100%. Then move to the transition point and create a keyframe at 0%. Now our solid will animate from right to left and will cover the entire screen at the end. Now apply a second linear wipe transition to the solid. On the transition point, create a keyframe at 0%. Then move forward one second and create a keyframe at 100%. Now when you play back the animation, it will animate from right to left, then bounce back. Obviously this isn't what we want either, so change the wipe angle from positive 90 degrees to negative 90 degrees. Now the transition will move from right to left and completely disappear. If we then adjust the wipe angle of the first linear wipe transition from positive 90 degrees to negative 90 degrees, then the transition will wipe from left to right instead, so choose whichever direction you prefer. To make it smoother, select all four keyframes and select Easy Ease from the Keyframe Assistant menu. In order to make this template even more versatile, we need to make sure that the wipe angle for both transitions are linked together so that if we change the rotation, the entire shape will move. First of all, hold the Alt key and click on the Wipe Angle Properties keyframe symbol. This will reveal the Expressions menu for it. Now drag the Pick Whip from the Wipe Angle of the second linear wipe up to the Wipe Angle wheel in the Effects Control Panel for the first linear wipe. Make sure you do this in the Effects Control Panel. If you try to attach it to the Wipe Angle on the timeline, it will not work, so make sure you drag this to the correct location. Then in the Expression menu we opened, add plus 180, so the angle will always be 180 degrees off from the first layer. Now when you adjust the wipe angle of the first linear wipe effect, the entire layer will adjust properly and will have a consistent angle. Now you may be wondering why we spent so much time doing something that could have been accomplished simply by creating a solid and putting two position keyframes on it to move it across the screen. And yes, if what we have now is all you wanted to do, it is that easy. But we want to have something much more versatile, and using these effects this way means we'll be able to manipulate what we have much easier. Expanding upon the shape wipe template. What you do next with this template is up to you, but here's something you can do to add to this transition in order to spice it up. First, let's search for and add the echo effect. Make sure you place it below the two linear wipe layers. This effect will add extra bands of color to the edges of the solid and because of the way we created this template, it will mirror the effect on each side. The extra bands of color will be lighter than whatever color the solid is, with the original color appearing only on the outside. This does mean that the main color of your solid will change and will be relatively light. To change the original color of your solid, you can press Ctrl Shift Y with the solid selected. To add more echoes, adjust the number of echoes amount. I find that 3 or 4 ends up looking the best. The biggest issue with using the echo effect is that you have no control over the colors, and you leave it to After Effects to pick them based on your original color. But once you have this template set up, it's a super easy effect that you can set up in seconds. And if you want more control over the echo effect, what we teach you in these next couple transitions can apply to it as well, 
So let's see if by the end of the video, you've figured out how to do it. Simple Shutter Blinds This simple After Effects transition can be made just with shapes and a small number of keyframes. Anyone can do it, and it's incredibly versatile. Start by drawing a rectangle across the entire workspace, but only covering part of the vertical space. Next, open the properties of this shape, click on Rectangle Path, then unlink the two size properties. Next, go forward a few frames and create a size keyframe. Then, go to the beginning of the project and set the vertical size, the one on the right, to zero. Now you should have an animation of the rectangle opening up from the center, and we will effectively just be repeating this effect once we refine it down. Now we need an animation of the rectangle closing again. Go to where you'd like your animation to end, then add another keyframe of the current position. Then go a few frames forward, then bring the size to zero. Ideally, this should mirror the first animation. So now we have both ends of the animation. To make it smoother, select all of the keyframes, then right click, click on Keyframe Assistant, and click on Easy Ease. If you want to further refine the animation, you can click on the Graph Editor and adjust the value graph. But with our Easy Ease transitions in place, both of these graphs should be perfectly fine as they are. Now there are a couple of paths we could go down, but let's pick the simple one first. Use the Selection tool to drag the rectangle to the top of the screen, so that when the animation is fully open, it touches the top of the screen. Next, press Ctrl D in order to duplicate this layer. Drag it into place and repeat this process until you've covered the entire screen. And now, when we hit play, we can see all of the rectangles open and close. And when they're closed, it should completely cover the project. But it does need one more detail. Go forward a couple frames and drag one of the rectangles ahead, then go a couple more frames in and move another one of the rectangles there. Repeat this process for all of the layers. Now when you press play, all of the shades of the blinds open a little bit off from each other, making a more interesting transition. And if you don't like the speed that this animates at, you can drag them even farther out or push them back in. This is a pretty good basis, but it's even more interesting if we angle the blinds. So let's rewind to when we just had the first rectangle. Now go to the Transform Properties and adjust the rotation. Then drag it across the screen so that it covers a corner when it's fully open. Then press Ctrl D to duplicate it, and then move that shape into place. Once again, repeat this process until the whole project is covered. Lastly, we can stagger the animations so they start and end at slightly different times. This is another animation that can be heavily customized. You can use multiple colors, add images or effects, or layer on even more shapes. Have fun with this! Colored Fan Transition This next transition should be pretty easy if you understood the previous one. We're going to be utilizing the same techniques with duplicating shapes and staggering animations to create a fan transition. Start by creating a new solid and choosing whichever color you like. You can always change it later. Next, make sure the layer is selected and drag the anchor point from the center into the bottom left corner. To do this perfectly, press the Y key and then select the anchor point. Hold the control key and the anchor point will snap to the corner when you drag near it. Now press S for scale and increase the scale so there's a ton of extra space emanating from this anchor point. Let's just say something about 200% so that you give yourself enough wiggle room. Now press R for rotation and add a keyframe at the beginning. Change the rotation so that the shape is hiding just out of view on the left side of the project. Because we moved the anchor point earlier, it will rotate around the bottom left corner. Move the playhead forward and create a new keyframe by changing the rotation value so that the shape comes down then disappears just beyond the bottom of the project. You can play it back and change where the keyframe is if you like, but somewhere around 2 seconds should feel pretty good. Next we'll be putting some finishing touches on this layer before creating the rest of the transition. Select both keyframes and easy ease them to create a smooth animation. Now open the graph editor and adjust the graph as you see fit. I think it looks pretty good if the start of the curve is a little more aggressive than the end of the curve, meaning the first half of the animation will happen faster than the second half. This will result in the solid slowing down as it nears the end of the transition. At this point, review the transition and make sure it's at a speed that you like. You can easily adjust the position of the second keyframe to make it either faster or slower. Now we're going to duplicate this layer by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D. 
move forward a few frames and drag the start of this layer to that point. This is exactly what we did with the previous transition. If you zoom in on the timeline, you can see frame gaps, and you can use this to make sure you have consistent spacing between each layer, such as 10 frames. Unlike the window blinds effect, this transition looks best if each of the layers is staggered the exact same amount. In the window blinds transition, a little bit of randomness feels pretty good, but in this transition, we want everything to be precisely spaced. Now press Ctrl Shift Y to change the color of this second solid to a different color. Repeat this process, always staggering the next layer by the same amount and changing the color. You can repeat it as many times as you like, which will depend on how long the transition is and what your spacing is between each layer. You can use some color guides to find a spectrum of colors that look good together. By the end, you'll have an attractive, colorful, and smooth fan transition. You can stop here or we can add a little bit more detail. So let's add a drop shadow. Right click on one of the layers and select layer styles, then drop shadow. Open up the drop shadow menu under the layer and adjust the settings however you like. I personally prefer a softer, more gentle shadow, so I'll increase the size and reduce the opacity. If you want a sharper shadow, you can do that too. Now select the layer style heading and copy and paste it onto the rest of the layers, giving all of them the exact same effect. This creates a cool 3D look, giving the transition some additional depth. So did you figure out the hidden secret on how to create the echo effect on your own? If you did, leave it in a comment below and we'll say congratulations. So hopefully these After Effects transitions inspired you to create your own. These are great templates to work off of, and they're super easy and quick to make. And they look great. In the previous video, we covered transitions that manipulated the footage itself, and here we've worked with shapes that can mask the cut between two clips. It's a totally different way to do a transition, but one that is popular for YouTube intros, scene changes in a live stream, and so much more. You can do a lot to spice up these transitions, including layering in sound effects, or applying additional effects to your footage as it's covered or revealed by the transition. Feel free to drop a comment below with what you plan on doing to make these transitions your own, and we'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And if you're looking for professional LUTs, Lightroom desktop and mobile presets, Premiere Pro templates, and more photo and video education, visit filtergrade.com today.